hello my darlings how are you good morning i just dropped uh adrian off at nursery and i have been overloaded <laughs> with so many of you asking for um eleanor's uh and one of you sent me a message just now and you googled her i didn't even know that she was on google why i just didn't know so i'm going to i'm going to screenshot or try yes yeah, screenshot video it for you guys um she's amazing I don't know what to tell you she is absolutely amazing and um i think that she has a lot because i have been forwarding her email and i think that's e easier as well as her number i wanted to ask you do you want me to do a detailed video about my experience with eleanor let me know guys if you google eleanor gone and fell it will come up and you'll get all kinds of information about her. I don't know whether I mentioned to you that Eleanor um, is also, uh, has helped the FBI. Yep, yep, yep. She's helped the FBI on so many cases. She's been doing this for over 40 years. Um, I saw a picture of her. This is not her, but I'm going to click onto this and then when you this this is not her she has dark hair but you will see all of the testimonies here you can google her if you want and here you have i haven't seen eleanor quite a while but you are if you are looking for an accurate reader she is it she is a rare breed she doesn't use targets like most readers go see her like i told you she allows you to record her that way you can reference back when you need she predicted so many things it's uncanny she's kind-hearted loving absolutely amazing with how she gives advice she was able to help me find peace like i was telling you guys so yeah eleanor is fabulous and uh you guys you try and get in touch with her and i will give you her number this is her right here this is her with the dark hair <laughs> all right my loves easier as well as her number i wanted to ask you do you want me to do a detailed video about my experience with eleanor let me know wasn't for her i wouldn't have gone out to california i wouldn't have met ula i wouldn't have pushed with adrian there are so many things that eleanor said 10 15 years before they actually happened i remember she said for me you're going to be talking to a lot of people at one time you know on television and i couldn't understand i said where i'll be a fabulous actress <laughs> i won an academy award this was in 2000 unbeknownst to me that it would be youtube youtube launched in 2009 it's amazing Do we love the makeup? Oh yes. Mm -hmm. I live, I love. I live, I love. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sunshine. Thank you. You watch the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, my love. What will I do without you? Hello, my darling Fumi Nation. How are you? How is everything over there? How is life? How's work? I can't believe that we are going into kind of sort of year three-ish of this lockdown and um it's so funny when i kind of reminisce look back i truly believe that timing is everything i never thought that i would do this video you guys i've always said it it is my channel for sure but it is absolutely your show and i had done an episode called i have the solution to your broken heart watch till the end and i will link that episode down here because that is why i'm doing this episode in that episode i had talked about a woman i had met called eleanor and how she had impacted my life at the very end of that video i said if you want her number you dm me 
follow me on instagram that's the trade follow me and i'll give you the number i have gotten over 5,000 dms i'm still trying to respond and i know that eleanor is going to be busy for about a year because she takes her time so let me start from the very beginning and before we start let's talk about the beat so the kaftan i guess you guys have seen it before is by sai sakoi i'm going to put a link and a picture i've worn this so many times but i'm relaxing the sun is out i'm loving it i'm wearing my beautiful wig which i need to show you how i cut and feather this with my curtain bangs and we have a purple beat today because it's all about royalties actually bringing finally the kings and queens forward inside of you yeah alrighty. <laughs> i should tell you this is color pop yep this was a color pop pencil that i used and then my forever well like i have it right here i guess i should show you juvia's place there you go and this palette is the violets do we love do we live yeah 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 and then on the outskirts I used my beautiful collaboration by Juvia's, which was that beautiful blue, because I was trying to get, you know, the colors from this. If I'm looking a little skinny, because yeah, I'm losing weight. <laughs> I'm eating healthy. I'm enjoying it. And uh, this was a ColourPop pencil, all that I got in collaboration. And my nude lipstick is Revlon. Voila. That's, that's all that we're doing, you know. And that is it. In my last episode, I had talked to you guys on how to have some sort of insight on a broken heart. Your relationship had ended and that was where I was at, circa uh, 1999, 2000. I was recovering from a broken heart. I was trying to recover from a broken heart. Like about 4,000 of you that sent me DMs, the relationship had been absolutely destroyed you are going through a mourning process because it's like a death it really is like a death i have taken it over to say that not only is it a death you have the ghost now walking around with somebody else you can't really close that door there's no closure because the person that has died in your life is walking and breathing running around with somebody else Anywho, needless to say, I was 29, 30, 31. I was in that, you know, gray area of this devastating relationship. And his name was James. The name that I gave him in the last episode was James. So let's continue to call him James here. I was devastated from this relationship and I didn't know where my life was going. I was living in Manhattan at that time. I was modeling at that time and I felt very much that my career was kind of sort of coming to an end. I was struggling to keep my weight right down. I had gone from 117 to 125 and it was coming to my boobs and there are no boobs in modeling. <laughs> High fashion photo model, no. Victoria's Secret, yes. You have different types of um, modeling and I was strictly editorial. So I was just feeling very lost. And I had also lost this relationship where I wanted to have children. I wanted to get married. All my friends were married. They were beginning to have children. And I was in nowhere's lane. I went to one of my favorite restaurants. They are known for their Bellinis. You can have a true Bellini or you can have a virgin Bellini, which is non-alcoholic. I don't know if they still do that. I'm talking about literally 20 years ago. I would take a seat on the outside tables and just people watch. And so one day, beautiful, very attractive woman stopped by and she was sitting adjacent for me and we got into conversation. She asked me a couple of questions, just little chit chat. And because I was so vulnerable, broken hearted, I needed to speak to, I would speak to anybody who would listen. I had told her that my boyfriend had broken up with me. I wanted to get married. I didn't know where my life was going. And she reassuringly said to me, listen to my story. She had met a woman some people call her a psychic, I call her a soothsayer. Her name was Eleanor Gronenthal. 
and this woman was going to give her an insight into her future. This lady was also invited to a wedding from a guest. A guest had invited her to this beautiful wedding, which was to take place within the week. Eleanor had told her, you are going to meet your future husband at this wedding. Naturally, she was excited. What does he look like? What should I look out for? And Eleanor said that she didn't have to look far because her husband, her future husband, was the groom. She was instantly, she felt conned. <laughs> That's what she said. She said, I felt conned. I felt as if this woman was taking me for a ride. So I, 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 I almost literally had an instant dislike for her. Like she was insulting my intelligence. But Eleanor was persistent and said, it is the groom. She went to the wedding. Needless to say, the wedding, the marriage was very short-lived. She would end up bumping into the groom at that particular wedding a year later. Six months later, they were married, and they've been married for 24 years. You can imagine <laughs> what my face looked like when she told me this. I instantly asked for her number, and she gave it to me. And she said, she will give you an insight for me. She, she's not a fraud. She is the real deal. I don't know how she does it. I don't know, you know, where she gets all of this from. But I have been uh, talking to Eleanor for years and it has really changed my life. I said, okay. So I went back home. I used to live on 34th Street between 1st and 2nd Avenue. And I walked all the way. I think I was in a haze. I was so excited. This could just be, you know, uh, my ticket. That's how I felt. I lived on a six floor walk up apartment, six flights of stairs, <laughs> ran up. And I called, I spoke to her assistant. And now I completely and absolutely understand because she had to have an office, people that would take and book calls for her. Needless to say, um, I got more information about her and found out that she worked with the FBI on criminal cases from time to time, on cases that they couldn't solve, they couldn't foresee, they, couldn't, they didn't know where their next lead was. And they would go to Eleanor for advice and for guidance. Yes. I told her who I was. I explained to her that so so and so gave me this phone number and I was interested in having a reading with Eleanor. And she said, fine. I cannot remember exactly how much it was at the time, 40, 60, 50 dollars. I don't remember. This was in 2000. And she said, take a recent picture of yourself and send it along with the money as well as a cassette. I said, a cassette? A cassette for what? And she said that Eleanor records your conversation and sends it back to you so that you can use it for reference as things come to pass along the way, because they will. I had never heard of anything like this. And there was a pit in my stomach that I had a feeling, should I go ahead of this? Do I really want to know? Because it felt so authentic. There was nothing, you know, money, 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 money-ish about it. Because I tell you right now, if they had told me to pay two fifty, I would have paid it. I would have paid it. So the, the 40 50 60 was very cheap. 
you know, and I just thought, well, maybe, you know, the little corn kind of money that they can go for without it being too much of a daylight robbery. I'm telling you, things come to you and then immediately you're thinking, could this be? Maybe it's not. The negative, you think about the half, <laughs> the glass being half empty as opposed to it being half full. So I took a recent modeling picture of myself and sent it in. You have to remember it was the year 2000. We didn't even have Twitter. We didn't have anything like social media that we have now where you can take a selfie, you know, and send it in right away. Not at all. iPhone was not even around at the time. No, I can't remember what kind of phone that I had. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'll tell you, the beeper. Do you remember the beeper where you could just text a little message or whatever? That was still around. And I used a landline to call her. Those were the days. <laughs> and the assistant told me, once she got my package, they would get in touch with me to book an appointment. The appointment, I think, was 45 minutes long. I think so. Having said that, I think I've spoken to Eleanor about 10 times in the past 23 years. And never once was it less than an hour long. She was very kind, very generous like that because I would always ask her questions. And so we booked the appointment. I made sure my schedule was clear. I had everything as quiet as this. I didn't want to forget anything because I had questions I wanted to ask her and I wanted to listen to what she was saying. Primarily about James. When she got onto the phone, Fume, Fume, <laughs> how are you? I was on the East Coast, she was on the West Coast. And I asked about um, James. And she said, James is not the one. Flat out. James is not the one. <laughs> I wanted to cry. She said, it's not him. She said, James is not interested in anybody as a matter of fact. Not you, not anybody. He's just very into himself. And to the point, he doesn't even know what he wants for himself. Eleanor went on to tell me that, I, I again, I was, I was in my, I was 30, 31, had to be. Eleanor told me I wasn't getting married anytime soon. And I said, what do you mean anytime soon? What, 35? She said, no, further, 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 further down. And I asked her, if I'm not getting married further down, when do I have children? She said, even further down. <laughs> I said, what? Because again, like I said in my last video, I knew fully well, my father's a doctor. I knew fully well that you have a fertility window of 25 to 35. You do not get married, have children around that time is, it can get difficult. So you must take full opportunity of freezing your eggs. When you freeze your eggs, you have a lifespan of 10 years. You can continue to, you know, put new eggs in there just to give yourself longevity. Uh, you can Google this. A baby girl is born with all of her fertility eggs. We are born with all the eggs we will ever have. We are born with two to one million eggs. Mm -hmm. I am talking about by the time you're born, those eggs are already nine months old because the eggs are formed right away in month one. You can double check this when you're still in the mother's womb. By the time you are born, those eggs are nine months old. By the time you're 25, from that two to one million eggs that you have, you're down to 300,000. By the time you get down to 35, you can imagine the numbers. This should be taught in every university, in every high school. Because it's tough being a woman. The expectations are so high. And we are expected to be on this pedestal and yet sometimes a lot of times you're surrounded by men 
boys, partners, that do not come up to those expectations they expect from us. She went on to tell me so many things, so many things that were so uncanny. She told me I was moving to the West Coast and that she saw me driving on the Pacific Coast Highway. It was impossible because I lived in New York and I did not know how to drive, neither did I have a driver's license. She said, for me, you are going to be speaking to many people. You're going to be loved by so many. She couldn't articulate what it was. So she said, for me, it's almost like a television. I can't explain it, but you are on television of some sort. And lots of people watch you. Again, this is 2000. YouTube didn't come until 2009. The irony of it all is that I am telling this story in 2022 when my channel grew in the past year from 50,000 to over 300,000. She saw it as it is right now. 22 years later. If you had told me my 30-year-old self, I thought, and I would have absolutely thought, at 52, going 53, I would have been married. My children would have been in their 20s, most probably a grandmother. I would be knitting somewhere. I would have retired esk. I would never have pictured this vibrant person in front of me. That is me. No. Doing this? Never. And I couldn't foresee it. And I thought it was acting. And I thought perhaps I was on this big television show and that was what it was. It's amazing and I think a lot of you ask your moms, ask your older sisters how it was in the 90s, how it was in the early 2000s. It was a different world. And we could never have foreseen how much of a futuristic world we are now living in. Because all of this didn't exist. But she foresaw it. I'll tell you an incident. At that time, I was um, going through or applying for my American citizenship. And... I had gotten an appointment. For those of you that have gone through the process, you know how grueling it is. And I had an appointment. I will never, ever forget. It was November. And I had all of the letters and I had all of the documents. And I was to go in for a very important appointment leading to my citizenship. They had sent me all of the papers, everything. The date was penciled in the calendar. And these are dates that, are, that don't change. They don't change. Uh, to be an American citizen, I think it takes about five years. So I was, I think I was going year four on this. Not a single appointment changed. Not, a, not even the time. Everything was to the T. And Eleanor said, I did not even tell her that I was doing my citizenship. She said, oh, by the way, Fumi, don't travel. Don't go on this little vacation right now because your appointment for your citizenship is going to change. I argued with her. I said, oh, no, 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 no. You've got that wrong. Maybe they'll call me for something else, but there's no way that this is going to change. And she said, no, Fumi, it's going to change. I don't know, perhaps you don't make the first appointment and they have to change it or whatever. But um, I would not travel right now because they're going to call you for you to come in sooner. The appointment that I had was about six weeks away. Two weeks later, I got a letter in the mail saying that they had changed the appointment. Mm -hmm. She told me, that my future husband spoke another language. He was white and that he spoke another language. She told me that I would struggle to have my baby boy. 
from the very beginning, it was always a boy. I said, you don't see any girls? <laughs> she said, no, it's a boy. It's a boy. It's a boy. It's a boy. And um, I remember I had moved to California and um, I was driving down the Pacific Coast Highway going for an audition. It was things like that, that, you know, I would have flashbacks and I would remember that Eleanor had said this. Eleanor saved my life. Eleanor saved my life in more ways than one. And I think um, that is why I wanted to share this with you. I struggled for a long time. I've had my channel for how many years? Seven years. And I wasn't sure if I wanted to share this with you, how you would react, whether it was something that I wanted to share with you. And the opportunity kind of presented itself in the last episode because sometimes a breakup, that death is so devastating you can't see a bright light. And having Eleanor instantly revived me from James because I knew something better was coming. And I think in a sense, it's a situation where when something dies, you cannot, you don't, you cannot see any light, anything coming from this. At that devastating moment, during that mourning period, you just can't see a happy day in front of you. Eleanor was that. As hurt as I was with James, I became stronger. Many of you say, Fumi, you are so happy, you're so positive. The direct cause is Eleanor. Because I kind of sort of know how my future will pan out. And what I began to do was work hard. I began to work hard. If I wanted something, you just worked hard. I realized that having her was one part. But to really drive that bus, I worked hard. I worked hard on myself. I went from NYU to UCLA where I took advertising, marketing classes because I thought for me it could also work for E! Entertainment tonight because I loved celebrity, I loved fashion, I loved red carpet and I thought you could host, you could be one of those hosts that would be on like E! Entertainment. So I said for me, go for it. The iron of it all is that those classes and courses which I did, you know, they were evening classes at UCLA, they all played a huge part in my channel. In Fumi's Fashion Police, I ended up doing it, perhaps not for E, but for me. Perhaps not for E, but for my channel. I just began to drive myself through because I knew Fumi, the stronger you are, the more resistant you are, you will get closer to everything that you desire for yourself. And so, what happened? We had September 11th, because I'm going back to 2000 when I first, first spoke to her. I had a bachelor's in business administration. I was a graduate from London, <laughs> even though I'm in London now. I went to the American College in London. I studied business and I went to the actor studio, prestigious actor studio that is so difficult to get in. I went in for the written exam. I went in for the th oral exam and for the theatrics. And I passed. Yes. <laughs> and I was to start at the actor's studio. I was terribly excited. I was like, okay, Fumi, you're making your way. And I was happy. And then we had September 11th. And it changed everything for me. And I said to myself, Fumi, go to LA. Go to LA because at that time, I had met actor friends, and so many actors now came through Actor Studio. And a lot of them said they just upped and went to LA. I said in my previous video, I had read an article about Brad Pitt, who, had, who was in his last uh, term at uni and decided to go. And when September 11th happened, I just realized that all we have 
is today. And I also realized, for me, don't wait. Anything you want to do, don't leave it till tomorrow. Go now. Do it now. And that has always been my MO. Till this very day, if I say I want to do something, I will go right now and do it. And not wait for tomorrow. Because I don't know what tomorrow will bring. And so I went to California. And again, like I said, I found myself, you know, driving because California is a driving city. I did not know that until I went there to live. I had been there once. We were out there doing a music video with Puff Daddy. Puff Daddy underneath was seeing Jennifer Lopez at the time. Nobody knew in the press or whatever. And so we were chauffeured everywhere from our hotels. But this was me really moving into California and the sunshine. It was just like this. It was so fabulous, you know. And I just remembered, you know, driving around and remembering Eleanor. And I would speak to Eleanor about every two years. Something would happen that she said. I would be anxious about something, you know, and she would tell me. It would always be something new that we had to add. And I went out to go and see her. And she's a beautiful woman. She was in her 60s then. I spoke to her Two weeks ago, two weeks ago, because my nanny was nervous about her future getting married because she was 31. And one of those rare days, Eleanor picked up the phone and we chatted for a little bit. And she said, for me, I said, yes, Eleanor. <laughs> How are you? How is Adrian? How is Ola? And I, and I asked how she was. And I asked how old she was. She's 86 now. And I told her I would be giving her number. And she said, no problem. Absolutely. And my nanny spoke to her. And she came back to me. And she said, for me, I feel fantastic. I feel so reassured. It was wonderful to see her smile. And I said, you know what, Fums? You should give this to Fumi Nation. Because there are so many of you. So many of you. That I, I, I ache for. And I want you to know it will be okay. Speak to her. She will tell you. I don't know what the system is now. What you send in as tips. Technology has changed. I don't know what her assistants will tell you. Um, in the last three, four days, it has been jam-packed. You guys have been calling me back, telling me that her, her voicemail is full. Yes. Over 5,000 of you. I'm not surprised that it is full. She said so many things that came to pass. I once asked her, why do you only charge this little? She said, for me, because it's a gift. And I said, what do you mean? If it's a gift, you should be charging. <laughs> she said, for me, there's honor in what I do. I live very well. I'm okay. You know, it separates us really from the fraudsters. This is something that I was born with and she was terribly scared of it as a young girl. She didn't know how to handle it. She, she didn't like that she saw this about other people. She didn't like it. And, and in a way, I can imagine. And, and she, she was older and she was able to kind of sort of handle and refocus. And she realized her strengths and how she could just, you know, draw out things. And she says she just sees it. She just sees it and she says it out. That's it. She's never wrong. She just focuses into your energy. And that is what it is. And um, circumstances that have happened throughout these 23 years have really had that foundation of Eleanor underneath. I remember I was going through IVF and I was, my body was suffering. I was suffering mentally, emotionally, financially. It was draining and I had just miscarried. It was IVF number seven and I, I, we were ready to stop. And she said, no, 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 no. It's soon now. It's close. It's very close. And um, Eleanor will give you that peace. I feel like I'm ha happier. 
I'm younger feeling because I'm happy, I'm settled, and I don't have any anxiety, none whatsoever. I work hard, I work hard, very, very hard every day, you know, and I enjoy my husband, I enjoy my son, I enjoy my family, I enjoy my friends. And you absolutely deserve the same. So I wanted to do a separate video from what I did last week and give this to you and explain to you how and why and who and let you know that this is the greatest 110%, the greatest and the most life-changing chapter that you will go through. It will get easier from here after you've spoken to Eleanor. I want to give you advice. Always stay open-minded with people that you meet. Because I don't know if I had closed off and said I didn't, you know, want to talk to this lady or whatever. I don't know where that would have led. A lot of my adventures have been from people that I've met that I say good morning to, that I smile to, that I give a cup of tea, coffee to, that I get up for the seat off the tube to give to somebody else, to just give a compliment to another person. You do not know the reward you could get in return. I'm speaking from experience. Always be kind. Always be nice. Always be open-minded. Run and jump off that cliff. Don't think about the rocks below. Think about the parachute that will open up. Think positive. Think positively. Work hard. Nothing is for free. And you will really see how your world opens up because you have opened up your mind to everything. I made an episode a couple of uh, months ago and I talked about relationships, how you must open your mind to religion, to this, to that. Some of you said in the comments, nah, I can't do it, nah, I can't do it. Guess what? You'll be in your box. You will be in that square little box your entire lives when you have the entire world that was gifted to you. You will continue to stay in that box because you're imprisoned mentally in within this box. Heart to heart, sister to sister, I am telling you gospel. All of my love, my darlings. You want the number, follow me on Instagram. Send me a DM on Instagram. Don't email me, don't call me, don't do anything anywhere else. I will not respond. If you do not have Instagram, find somebody that does. Yeah. You want it that bad? You're going to make an effort for it, my sweets. Sending you all of my love, darlings. <laughs> I'll see you soon. <laughs>